So today's video is for the October XOX kit. Uh, this kit is around drawing, life drawing, uh, with the emphasis on um, drawing on the right side of the brain, and also a no-sew pencil case made from Craftex. So we'll put the Craftex to the side for the moment. We're going to start with the life drawing. So we've provided you with four types of pencils. We've got HB, 2B, 4B, and 6B. And the difference between the two, uh, the four pencils are. Um, the ones that end in B mean black or bold, um, and the, um, the softness increases as the number increases. So 2B is a reasonably hard pencil compared to the 6B pencil. Um, H in the pencils means hard, so we've got HB which is hard, bold, perfect for writing. Um, I like to use the 2B when I'm drawing, but it's up to you what you like to do. Generally people use the 4B, 6B, 8B, use them for shading. So I suggest that you try this uh, when we're doing this drawing. Pencils. I've also given you a, um, what I like to call the smudge tool, but you can tell I've used too much Photoshop because <laughs> I keep calling it the smudge tool. But it's a, a blending stump and it's actually rolled up paper essentially. If it does get too dark um, from all your shading and you need it to go clean again, you can use a little bit of sandpaper to sandpaper it back. I've got a ruler which you'll need to rule the lines. You'll also need this in the second project. If you look at the ruler and it's only in inches, uh, that's cool. You just take it out of its packet and flip it over. So inches one side, centimeters the other. I had a little bit of a heart attack when I was packing the kits uh, and thought that we'd only got inch rulers, which is not very helpful. A rubber the permanent marker which we're going to use first up and a box cutter and the reason why I provided you with a box cutter not only do we need it for the second project for the pencil case but I only ever use box cutters to uh, sharpen my pencils I don't use a sharpener because you don't have any control over um, what the end of your pencil um, turns out like so it's really difficult to sketch uh, when the end of your pencil is insanely sharp and that's what a pencil sharpener will do that's its job um, it's a lot easier to sketch when you've got a little bit of a blunter um, end to your pencil. So I just use the blade to get a nice blunt edge on there. It just gives you a lot more control when you're sharpening, but please, please, please be careful. Always when you're sharpening a pencil, sharpen away from yourself. Um, if you end up snapping the graphite for some reason, just work your way back starting right at the end and getting a bit closer up to the end of your pencil. Yep. Uh, we've provided you with some templates. These images we sourced from pexel.com, P-E-X-E-L.com, um, or oh, there's an S in there, pexels.com. I'll put the link on the uh, website uh, under the kit. Uh, feel free to jump on there and source your own images if these three images don't um, tickle your fancy or you can just grab a magazine and pop any A4 image or anything smaller than A4 into your uh, um, template they're about to cut out, um, sorry, draw out. Um, so feel free to use these otherwise find your own and of course a sketchbook, acid free, really important. So the first part of this project is we are drawing up the grid on our Protector. So I've already done this because it does take a long time. So just use a ruler, measured out 15 mil um, grid points and then drew the grid on with the permanent marker. Just remember, once you've drawn your grid on this way, just let the permanent marker dry a little bit before you start putting on um, the other lines, the horizontal lines, uh, because we don't want smudges all over it. Um, once you've done that, you then grab your sketchbook and you draw out the exact same grid. So if you've used 15 mil lines, use 15 mil lines again. If you're quite a competent drawer and you're pretty excited about this and not too scared, um, draw larger grid lines. So draw, draw maybe 20 mil, 25 mil or even larger if, you, if you've got no problems. So you're going to mimic that up there. Once you've drawn up your grid, you're going to pop your image in there so the grid's sitting over the top of it and that will be the image that we draw. So you're going to match it up with your grid on your paper and you're going to start, 
start sketching. So I've done one here and I'm going to put this time lapse of this drawing onto the website so you'll be able to see the progress of it because if I do the progress now, this video will go forever. Um, but what you want to start out with is my suggestion is to use a 2B pencil to start out with and to work within the grid lines and make sure that you're just doing the contours and just make it really sketchy and fluid. Don't worry about doing really hard jagged lines. This is where her hair goes, this is where her eyes go. Just be really sketchy, really light about it and just concentrate on the really obvious dark areas. Um, so that's going to be your first port of call. Go through all the grid, sketch out you know, the contours of her face and all whatever image you're using. If you're feeling like it's not copying it across very well, my suggestion is to turn your sketch pad upside down and this is very left hand, uh, left, um, switching off the left hand side of the brain and switching on the right hand side of the brain. Turn everything upside down, turn your sketch pad upside down, turn your um, grid image upside down and then you want to actually block out what you're not drawing. So concentrate on one square at a time and block the rest out so you can't see it. So you're simply drawing essentially the black and the shades and that in the cube. You're not actually drawing an eye or you're not actually drawing your know, hair, you're just drawing you know, physical shapes and it, it switches off that left hand logical side of the brain and it lets that right hand side of the brain just draw essentially what it sees. Uh, another technique to use while you're trying to draw is to play music that doesn't have any words in it or simply do it in silence. You really want that left hand side of the brain to just completely switch off. It's your logical um, side of your brain and, and it, it tends to take over drawing for you and that's when your drawing of a ball looks like essentially a pretty bad ball. But if you draw exactly what's in front of you, exactly what you see, exactly the shades that you're seeing, that's using the right hand side of your brain. Um, so, once you've done the contours and you're pretty happy with it, my suggestion is to move up to a 4B or a 6B and start to shade. Don't get too caught up in the shading because you will have to rub out your um, grid lines at some point and if you've done a lot of shading, it's quite difficult to get all those grid lines rubbed out. So do a little bit of shading. What you really want to concentrate on is where the light is coming from. So for example, in this image that we're using, you can tell that the light source is coming in from this side at about that angle. So you can see she's all shaded here and she's a bit lighter on this side. Yep, and then again dark on this side. So definitely light source coming in from this side, probably a little bit in front of her. Yep. So you want to really concentrate on that and, and focus on where the shadows are, where the, the lighter spots are, are on, on your image. So once you've rubbed out your lines, you can then go back in with the 4B or the 6B and get more into that shading. Um, the longer you spend on this project, the better it will turn out. Um, my finished project, I like to do a lot more sketchy, darker lines over the top. It doesn't really give it much of a life drawing feeling, it gives it more of a cartoon feeling, but that's very much my style of drawing. Um, a couple questions that I've been asked are how to hold the pencil. So I like to hold the pencil as if I was writing but just a little bit further down. I feel like it it, it lets me draw a little bit more loosely than I might normal because my writing is quite formal so when I'm writing I'm right at the end. When I'm drawing I'm quite far back. Yep. Other people like to draw as if their pencil were a Conti pencil or pastel or something. Um, this is really good if you hate sharpening your pencil because what it'll actually do if you move your way around the pencil it'll keep it quite sharp. Yeah, and this covers a lot of area more so than uh, if you were using the tip of the pencil which I tend to use when I'm drawing. Um, you can switch it up between the two, use the side for the majority of your drawing and then if you need to do darker, more defined lines, you can get in there and use the tip. Yep. Um, but it's up to you. Have a play around, see what suits you best. There's no right or wrong way. Um, shading. So just because your image is shaded in a certain way, you know, photographic images are very... Um, the shading's very subtle in, a, in most of them. Uh, mix up your drawing a little bit and if you want to do, you know, stippling or cross hatching, you know, you can add that. Add it at the end, see if it adds a bit more depth to your image. Just have a play with it and see, you know, cross hatching. 
to twang. Just have a, a play with different shading techniques and see what works best for you, what, what outcome you like the best, and that will help define your style, your style as well. Um, also, I want you to think about the pressure of the pencil. So how heavy or light you're pushing when you're drawing. So when I'm initially sketching the contour, it'll be very light. You know, it's so easy to go back in and um, you know rub things out or just simply go over the top. So once you're happy with your line, then you can go back over it. And then no doubt you'll sketch over the top of that again as well. I'm just sketching this from my head, not from the image. So <laughs> I copy this. And then you can even go over a lot darker again. Now I'm using two here. I'll grab my 6B and go over even darker. And really bring out. Yep, so think about the pressure that you're using. <coughs> Other than that, I think I've covered everything um, about the tools and how to sketch basics. Um, really try and get into the flow. When you're in the flow, it's very much right-hand side of the brain, switching off that left-hand logical side of the brain. Um, other than that, practice, practice, practice. But I guarantee you, if you stick to that upside down, going one grid at a time at 15 mil grid intervals and if you truly draw what you're seeing you're truly letting your right hand side of the brain take over your drawing will be spectacular and I, I really believe that you'll impress yourself with your drawing skills so that's the drawing part of the project the second part is very simple and all you need to do is grab your craft decks we've got lots of notes on craft decks on our blog on how to uh, place, put images on here and how they'll wear. Um, so jump into our blog, I'll put a link on the website as well. Um, so you can decorate your pencil roll if you want to. So you'll notice on the instructions, there is a template that you can use. It's up to you if you want to use this or not. The little cut holes for the leather, you work out where you want them to go. We haven't told you exactly specifically where they need to go, but play it by ear. So, this is the roll, you'll just need your ruler and a pencil to rule out where each of the cuts are going to go with the gaps in between. You can see all the pencil marks I've made on here and you just need little square holes for you to feed your leather through. You'll notice I sent this through the printer, I may have ruined our printer, um, my image was a bit big, but you can send this through a laser printer, this will go through the wash fine. It'll fade slightly, just like the tag on the back of the jeans, it fades slightly but it's still very... Um, easy to see and I love the, the look that it gives. So once you've cut out with your scalpel you can just feed your pencils in here like this and put your little stump in here too and fill it up with all your pencils and then you just tie it off. And that's your pencil roll. You can take that with you with your sketchbook. Uh, thanks for watching the video today. I really appreciate it. Any feedback on the videos would be fantastic. We're uh, currently intermittently using the videos when the projects are a little bit harder and we believe that we can add value. Um, otherwise, if it's easier projects in the kits, then we'll just stick with the new instructions which have, which have the images now. Um, but again, any feedback you have is great and any ideas for future kits we really appreciate and we will see you next month.